moths. When you think of these insect denizens of the dark, does your mind turn first to holes in your carpet and your favourite woolly jumper? Mine doesn't. I think first of the great beauty of moths like the burnished brass. Or this Ilanthus webworm. Here in the UK, only two species of moths are significant household pests, out of several thousand in total. And in fact, many more species of moths are beneficial to the health of our ecosystems. They provide an important source of food for animals, including birds and bats, both as adult moths and during their caterpillar stage. And recently, we have begun to understand how important moths might be as pollinators of a wide range of plants. This role has been previously underappreciated, perhaps because it takes place under the cover of darkness, with other groups of pollinators getting the plaudits. So in 2014, we collated evidence from the scientific literature to show that nighttime pollination by moths is a truly global phenomenon and is documented to occur in the majority of important habitat types. Then the following summer, we made a big step forward, uncovering some of the first evidence that moths might be pollinators of economically important crops. These included oilseed rape, which achieves larger yields of higher quality and market value when pollinated by insects. And oilseed rape is a major crop in East Yorkshire, where the study took place. Considering this, it's worrying that data shows moths are in decline, just like many other insect groups. Here in the UK, this 2013 report from the charity Butterfly Conservation used data from the Rothamsted Insect Survey to reveal a decline in the abundance of moths over a 40 year period. That decline has not abated since. The drivers of the decline are multiple and likely to include climate warming and habitat loss among them. When the report was written, Artificial light at night was considered a likely candidate, partly because of the well-known phenomenon whereby moths seem to be irresistibly drawn to lights. However, no evidence existed to confirm this. Since then, this has changed. We now know that light pollution impacts on moths in multiple ways, including by disrupting their reproduction and increasing their vulnerability to predators such as bats and this enterprising spider. But how about those nocturnal pollination interactions? Are they disrupted by light pollution as well? To find out, we set up an experiment to compare moth communities between 20 agricultural sites lit by high pressure sodium streetlights and 20 nearby unlit sites. We sampled moths at each site using a range of approaches and conducted three rounds of sampling in total, which roughly corresponded to spring, early summer and late summer. Back in the laboratory, we examined every captured moth for pollen, such as the grains highlighted in these images. Where we found pollen, we examined it under a microscope to identify which plant species it belonged to. We found that during the summer, moths tended to be statistically less abundant at ground level in the presence of streetlights, the white bars, compared to unlit sites, the grey bars. This appears to be because moths were attracted upwards to fly at higher altitudes around the height of the streetlight, where moth activity was correspondingly statistically increased. This suggests that moths at lit sites might spend less time foraging for flowers. And when we examined the data on pollen transport, this effect was evident, but not totally conclusive. Each individual moth caught at lit sites tended to carry less pollen than its counterparts from unlit sites, but this effect was not statistically significant. However, individual moths were less likely to be carrying pollen at all if we trapped them at a lit site, and we detected the pollen of fewer plant species in samples of moths from lit sites. Since that study, further work has supported the idea that the presence of streetlights is disruptive to nocturnal pollination by moths. A key step has been to focus on pollination itself rather than pollen transport, since the two are clearly linked but don't necessarily always correlate. First, a group of Swiss researchers led by Eva Knopp 
investigated fruit set in the cabbage thistle, a flower primarily pollinated by bees, under street lights and in the dark. Remarkably, they found a significant reduction in fruits in plants under lights. This means both that moths contribute enough to the pollination of this species, and that their contribution is sufficiently disrupted by lights for an effect to be detectable even in the presence of the plant's main pollinators. At around the same time, we were conducting a similar experiment using a mainly moth pollinated plant, the white campion. Rather than just comparing light and darkness, our experiment examined the impacts of two of the major ongoing transitions in street lighting technology, specifically introducing part night lighting schemes where lights are turned off at or around midnight and switching from existing luminaires to new LED street lights. Surprisingly, we found an increase in fruit set under full night lighting compared to unlit controls. However, we don't view this as a positive thing. White campion is highly visible under street lights and an increase in its pollination may indicate that other competing plants receive correspondingly less pollination. Therefore, this most likely points to more ecological disruption under streetlights. However, we found no difference in fruit set between plants under part night lighting and unlit controls. This supports other studies that suggest part night lighting may reduce the ecological impacts of streetlights. We didn't find any difference between high pressure sodium lights and LEDs. However, our experiment used off the shelf LEDs the great flexibility of this technology may allow improvements to be made with custom designs. So to conclude, what can be done to lessen the impacts of artificial light at night on moths? Clearly, the key is to reduce the amount of light pollution and the extent of its impact on wildlife. And a good first step is to consider the type of lighting you use. Insects, including moths, respond most strongly to blue light. So try to use light bulbs with a low blue content. Colour temperature is a good way to judge this. The International Dark Sky Association recommends aiming for bulbs with a colour temperature of 3000 Kelvin or less for outdoor lighting. Even better is to reduce the amount of lighting, including the length of time for which lights are on. At home, you could consider putting your external lights on motion sensors so that they only come on when they're needed. Similar schemes have been trialled for street lights, but part night street lighting is far more popular. This does reduce the impact on nocturnal ecosystems, but it's not feasible in all locations due to concerns around public and highway safety. Of course, the ideal situation would be to have no artificial light at night at all, but this is not possible everywhere. Still, getting rid of unnecessary external lights, both in the household and with excessive street lighting, would be a very positive step. And I'd like to finish by saying that of all the human induced threats to moths and their ecosystems, artificial light at night is arguably the one with the most readily implemented solutions already at hand. But putting these solutions into practice requires buy-in, both from governments and the general public. I hope you agree that it's a worthy cause.